Okay, good morning. So we start this with the first topic is betrayal. So we all know G Judas betrayed Jesus. It was already prophesied about him in Psalm 55. So today we'll just have a short meditation on why we th why did Judas have to betray Jesus? Judas was one among the 12 disciples, we know that. He walked with Jesus, ate with Jesus. He was with Jesus for three and a half years of his ministry. And when Jesus sent his disciples two by two to go to the towns and proclaim the gospel, Judas was one among them. And the disciples went from town to town. They preached the gospel, healed the sick, drove out the demons, um, uh, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. These were the instructions given by Jesus. And Judas experienced the kingdom of God. He saw the kingdom of God. He saw demons moving out of people. He lived with Jesus, so he knew that Jesus was a man of integrity. See, nobody can know you unless you really live with that person, right? It's that person whom you see 24-7 who really knows your character. So Judas knew Jesus, knew him for who he is, the son of God. Even Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, you must be a man of God because nobody can do the miracles that you're doing. And, Jesus, and Judas not only saw Jesus performing miracles, he himself performed miracles in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. So knowing all these, why did Judas betray Jesus? Now, I always wondered, was it necessary for Judas to betray Jesus? Because Jesus did everything openly. He spoke openly. He taught uh, everything in the open fields. He sat on the boats and multitudes came to him for healing. Everything, nothing was done in the dark. Nothing was done in secret. Everything was done openly and in the daylight. And with the population, of Israel at that time, everybody had heard of Jesus and everybody kind of un knew who Jesus was. He was not a secret figure. Like he didn't live in an underground bunker that nobody could see him. So if he was such a popular figure, what was the need for anybody even to betray? Second point is, it's not that the chief priest came to Judas and asked him to betray Jesus. Judas went to the chief priest and said that if you give him, if they gave him 30 pieces of silver, he would betray Jesus. Now, it is hard to understand the motive that Judas had for betrayal because the chief priests would have known who Jesus is, even if nobody identified Jesus, they would have known who Jesus was. The only reason, the only conclusion we can come to is that Judas was a lover of money. And we have indications of this even in the gospel. Judas was a treasurer of his group. And uh, when the lady came to anoint Jesus, Judas said, why wasn't this money, why wasn't this oil sold? And we could have fed the poor. And scripture itself comments on that statement and says, it is not because Judas cared for the poor. It is because he used to take money from the treasury. So Judas had a fatal flaw. And that flaw was his love of money, which, le which was left unchecked. Judas was with Jesus when Jesus spoke about God and mammon. Jesus said, you can either love God or you can love mammon. And mammon is the spirit behind the love of money. If you love one, you will hate the other. So Judas, I don't think, hated Jesus. You couldn't hate Jesus and walk with him. But when you love money, you automatically move towards hatred of God. Because Jesus said, if you love God, you will hate money. And if you love money, you will hate God. So by default, Judas was leaning towards hatred of God when he chose to love money. And it was 30 pieces of silver, the price that was set for him. So if Judas, who walked with Jesus, who left his 
his uh, occupation and came to be a disciple of Jesus if he could betray Jesus then we all need to be aware of the fact that we people we stand by God's grace we can easily lean towards love of money i'm sure judas heard all the sermons of jesus but jesus exhorted about money for love of money is the closest competitor to love of god because money can purchase almost all the things almost all the things that god can give and money is deceiving it tells you because you can see it with your eyes it tells you lean on me i can give you a lot of things now god also says lean on me but god is invisible it's more difficult to trust someone who's invisible than trust someone who is visible so i would like to talk about another betrayal in the history of christendom and this is the betrayal of william tindale now just to give you a little background on who william tindale was he was an englishman who was one of the reformers you know he lived at a time when the reformation was going on in europe under martin under martin luther and it was in the 16th century and william tindale was a high was a great scholar highly educated and uh, well educated in oxford and uh, cambridge and he knew one thing that the bible had to be translated into english so that the common man will get the get, will be able to understand the foundation of their faith now the whole world at that time was under the yoke of the roman catholic church and the roman catholic church had the bible only translated in latin and it was not given to the common man it was left for the priests and the bishops and the cardinals and the church to interpret the word of god and give it to the people the whole idea being if you give the word to the common man they might misinterpret the word because the common man was not educated so all the people who are in the church the people who are high in the hierarchy of the church they interpreted the word of god and gave it to the common man and we all if you go back into the history of reformation we will realize there were so many problems related to the interpretation of the word of god and many reformers starting with martin luther many reformers in the continent wanted the undiluted word of god to be given to the people now it was illegal to translate the word of god into english it was illegal so william tindale he left england and he was in brussels and he had a close group of friends who were merchants who protected him and enabled him to translate the word of god into english in secret but there was a man who was like judas who betrayed tindale and this man was henry phillips he was a very rich man but he lost most of his money in gambling and there was a price set out for the arrest of william tindale so he went to brussels got into the company of these merchants found out where tindale was living befriended him spoke with him ate with him visited a house visited his house took even took a loan of money from him and tindale was totally unassuming he was naive he didn't realize that this man was going to betray him and it happened that one fine day he allowed the police to come to the hideout of tindale and he was arrested he was put in a dungeon and he was burnt at the stake now when tindale was burning at the stake his last words were lord open the eyes of the king of england and you know if you go back to history he was arrested at the time of uh, king henry the 8th and that was, henry the 8th was the king who moved away from papacy or from the rule of the pope and he started the church of england his daughter was queen elizabeth the 1st the queen under whom shakespeare wrote and she saw that protestant protestantism flourished in england and after her came james the 1st and james the 1st was the person who authorized the um kjv okay that's the first authorized version this happened about 50 years after william tindale's death 
but the um, the the writers of the bible those who wrote the authorized version took much of their material from the translations of william tyndale god answered the dying words of tyndale lord open the eyes of the king of england the king had to change if there has to be revival the head has to change so this was another betrayal a very very important betrayal that happened in the history of christendom today if you and me we are having the bibles with us we can read the bible and find out for ourselves even with the bibles how much of controversies are there in the bible right how many different denominations are there each looking at certain verses and giving importance to certain verses just imagine if there was no bible for us to read so we owe and the fact is the british empire owned later on with their conquest they owned 1/6 of the globe so wherever the conquest went the english bible went so that is how god was in their god enabled almost the entire globe to read the bible because it was translated into english so we will just read uh, psalm 55 because betrayal uh, psalm 55 verses 12 to 14 because betrayal is one of the meanest of all crimes for it was prophesied in psalm 55 regarding the betrayal of judas for it was not an enemy who reproaches me then i could bear it nor is it one who hates me who has exalted himself against me then i could hide from him but it was you a man my equal my companion and my acquaintance we took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of god in the throng you know when your friend betrays you you are taken unawares when your enemy betrays you you are ready for it you know he will do you harm but not so for a friend it takes you unawares and the betrayal is something that is so painful in your heart simply because it is your friend who did it now we understand what, what do we understand of god's plans in betrayal betrayal is not from god right it's it can never be from god it is not like judas was it was predetermined for judas to betray jesus what satan meant for evil god allowed it for good betrayal it's in judas case it is written very clearly that before the betrayal satan entered into jesus this is not from god this is from satan but god allowed it because whatever satan means for evil god allows it for good whatever satan means for destruction god allows it for salvation it was the death of jesus christ that's given us resurrection from the dead has given us given the whole of christendom salvation it was a betrayal of uh, william tyndale that has enabled us to read the bible given us the word of god as authority for our faith as a foundation for our faith so not even the most heinous of crimes can prevail against god god will finally turn all evil into good all praise be to god